The Somerdale Historical Society welcomes you to another Somerdale landmark, known today as the Warwick Tavern, but in the 1930s, it was called the Log Cabin. It was constructed one log at a time by a man named Charlie Alisi, a turn-of-the-century Italian immigrant who came to the U.S. in 1913 to join his brother Paul, who had come over three years earlier. The brothers started out in South Philly at the corner of Mithlin and Carmack, Paul opened a cleaners, and Charlie opened a shoe repair shop. Charlie and Paul married sisters, Elisabetta and Lillian Cavalcante. The families worked together to make their way in the new world. Although Charlie was a trained shoemaker, he always dreamed of running a neighborhood tavern. He envisioned a place where families could enjoy dinner on the front lawn and have live music on weekends. Charlie purchased the first piece of land, and other relatives began buying too. Eventually, the families purchased several tracts of adjoining land. There were only a few families in town back then, and neighbors helped Charlie and Lillian when they needed it. And the Elises did the same. Charlie started serving customers long before the building was complete. When a little money came in, Charlie would build a little more. Back in South Philly, the neighborhood boys had heard about Charlie building the cabin. The war was on at that point, and the boys didn't have much to do. When Charlie offered to take them to the cabin, they were beyond excited. One of the boys, the Passanante boy, grew up to have a son of his own. And wouldn't you know it, Gary is the current mayor of the borough of Somerdale. Charlie and Lillian had three daughters, Dolores, Anna, and Rosemarie. And we are pleased to be joined by two of them today. We are here today with Anna Alessi Finelli on the right, and we are here with Rosemarie Yeager on the left. Um, these are the daughters of Charlie Elisi. Uh, Warwick Tavern was built back in 1937. Seven. What was it like growing up as a little girl in the tavern? It was fun. <laughs> it was. Well, in the backyard, my father had a pile of logs that he never used. And we dug it out and made it into a ship. And we would get on the ship, five kids, and uh, pretend we were sailing the ocean. There's a big pole in the center of the dining room. And we used to, on bad weather, we would get our bikes and we would all ride around this pole. And uh, you could hear a rumble in, like a mile away. <laughs> and that's, that's how our fun was, riding around the bar. And then when we got really bad, we sat on the bench and carried us a car. We just the bus came every hour, and they had kicked the cross. <laughs> oh, we thought it was fun. We would wait for the men to come home from work and, and sit at the, the uh, bench in the front of the cabin and try to guess what, what color car would come first. That was our fun. So what do you remember most about your mother and father at the cabin? They loved each other. They don't want to work out in I think. They worked together. And yeah, at the end of the night, on a Saturday night, when it all died down, they'd say, come on, Charlie, let's dance. So they wanted to see them dance and stuff. And they would get, get up and dance and... Uh, my father, they would ask him to sing, and he couldn't sing, but he thought he could, and he sang, yeah, Way Marie, Way Marie, oh yeah. When Charlie, uh, your father, uh, got the television. Oh, we had a crowd. We couldn't keep them out. And the t TV was only about this big, but we were the first ones to have one. So on Saturday, Friday night, he would have to get out there early and get it tuned in to, uh, Cavalcade of Sports, or whatever you call it, for Joe Lewis. And that's when the place got packed. They all wanted to see Joe Lewis in the fights. You two young ladies uh, have great memories of your youth and growing up in the town. Oh, it was fun. It was work, too, believe me. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you realize it was work? No, we didn't realize it was work. You look black in this video. Now I look back and I thought, God, I was only a kid and I was making sandwiches. <laughs> but you were also family and you were part of this. Part of it. So you had, to, you had to contribute your share too. We all worked. It's been an absolute pleasure 
not only to meet you, but to hear your story. Uh, because I think every story should be told. And uh, y you girls have a great story because it's still evolving. It's still here. I'm so happy to, uh, to, to really do this interview today. And I'm so happy that you could both be here um, to tell your stories. Charlie loved America the way only an immigrant can. He spoke only English and never went back to Italy. Little by little, he brought most of his family over too. Charlie was known to say that the only thing Italy had given him was an empty stomach. America was his home. Charlie earned his citizenship by fighting in World War I. He was so proud to be an American. After he retired, Charlie bought a camper. He wanted to travel and see as much of his new country as he could. Charlie Alisi died at 71, but what a life he had. Charlie truly lived the American dream.